Greetings, everyone. I am not at another theme park, baby, but I am outside the Smithsonian Institution National Air and Space Museum. So if we go inside, see some science. Just gave anybody some context that's out there. It is hotter in DC than it is in Florida because the humidity is worse for some reason. I don't know why. I don't get it. It's weird. And typically like in Florida, like we're granted with rain. Yeah, we get some rain eventually. Yeah. Like you could be like, oh it's gonna hide the tide of time. Oh it's gonna rain a little bit. No, it does not rain in DC. It's it literally like it was gonna blue, rain blue, night, blue skies. Yeah, it didn't rain at all last night, so we just it was tortured for hours. <laughs> And hours and hours. It didn't help that we rode bikes all morning. Yes, we did ride bikes. And we rode bikes here, by the way, because it's literally like. Yeah, my, my arm's all like glistening. Check that out. Like, you don't need to like have a car coming into DC. Look at her hands. You don't have to have a car to get into DC. You can literally be like Uber, bike, whatever it is to get inside or get around the city, which is really cool. Take a look at all of this inside now we're going to touch upon like just about a lot of things that are in here but this already is overwhelming so we're just looking at here this is uh the mercury friendship 7 right here um this is what john glenn was in when he orbited the earth this one is gemini 4 yeah, which it, with edward white and it, it and the achievement from this is the first american spacewalk actually one of the cool things is that if you look inside there's two seats the so there's one here and the one on the other hand and there's controls like right there that's really neat right in front of me is the lunar module number two uh, lm2 actually and like look how big this is wow so I know my buddy Greg George is watching this and he's gonna love this, but this, this is the Star Trek Starship Enterprise. This is the actual model that was used in the show. <laughs> How big it is. This is awesome. Get your heart out, George. By the way, they got this nice exhibit of Sally Ride. All right here. Now Sally Ride, uh, was a teacher who flew on the Challenger in 1983? Was it the Challenger? No, no, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Oh, she was on the Challenger. I was 100% right. You see like early, early in our development of flight, we have like, try to figure out ways of flying everything. Balloons was like a big thing. So look at this huge thing, there's like, a ship with a balloon that will cut a fly as to wherever we want to go. So what you're looking at right now is the Blayro 9. Actually no, it's the Blayro 11. I'm wrong. It was on the opposite side. But the Blayro 11, uh, I think it said it sits three folks here and it was able to stay in flight for like three hours. Which is cool. But you can see like all the like early models of like planes up above me. Which is really cool. Look at this one right here. This is the like Curtis headless pusher. So you would just have no cover. You'd just be flying in the air, chilling. Like there's the seat right here. There's the steering wheel. Is there a little pedal? Yeah, there's like a little pedal there too. Here's a Airbus A320, which is typically what you have at the airports, or what you fly your, you know, your plane in. But look at the, uh, the seats here. Look at the cockpit. Rotate. Pretty cool. So they have a thing here where you can actually walk inside the entrance of the plane. There's your bathrooms here and here. You keep walking. This is kind of how the seats would be. Oh, you good? They'll sit like this, and you just keep on going. And there's a cockpit. It's really cool. Now this is really good information here. Especially about flying, um, saying that like way back in the day, flying was very, very expensive. Uh, so only like business travelers and wealthy, if you were rich, only you were able to fly. And that's kind of why those seats look super fancy while you're in there. But as it became more acceptable and more uh, a thing to do, 
uh, a coast to coast round trip costs about 260 about half the price for a new automobile but price went down and everybody could fly now take a look at this plane this is the Lockheed XP80 oh. it's the Lulu Bell prototype for the America's first practical jet airplane for military use though and in this uh, exhibit is a bunch of the naval ships that they would have used uh, throughout the times. Now, I believe this one is the groom in here. And then the Douglas SBD Dauntless this is the Douglas A4C Skyhawk. And right here is the Boeing F4B4. The cool thing about this exhibit is that it looks just like you're on or inside of a battleship. Uh, a lot similar to the one that we, we did long ago before the vlogs in San Diego. It even has like controls. You can't move them, but they're here along with this wheel. And here's their planet exhibit. You got a bunch of like satellites here. Probably look a little bit more into like what those really are. I don't know, I'm like a top of my head. So this is like just a bit of a scale on kind of how all the planets are. So there's Mercury right here, followed by Venus. There's Earth, Mars, there's Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn. I, I didn't point at Mars, or did I? There's Saturn. And Jupiter, this is a giant planet right above me. And this right here, I believe, is just showing like the different planets as it kind of goes back and forth. And you'll see it change very soon, but I think they can move it. And this right here is the, it's a full scale model of the Curiosity. And this same uh, vehicle is currently on Mars, right, traversing and then using the cameras, which is set up here as it just kind of goes through the mountainside. What you're looking at here, this is a special telescope called the Comet Seeker. So I think it was built about the 1900s. It was designed to detect the faint diffuse glow of small cometary tails. So they could actually look through here and see comets shooting off into space. That we're looking at right now. What is it? What? What? It's your turn to talk about New Horizons. <laughs> This new horizon. Uh huh. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? It is currently orbiting Pluto, which is a dwarf planet, but I'm from the time where it was an actual planet and it still is. I'm from the Now showing We're here at the Skylab Orbital Workshop. I'm not quite sure what's in it, but we're going to go check it out. By the way, right here, this is V2. This is the world's first ballistic missile. Look how big it is. This is on the first floor all the way up. That would be almost like the top of the, the building. So this would actually be inside of the Skylab. There's a rotating litter chair. This would be the bikes that they would use um, inside. There's a trash airlock. Look at all this inside. They would be in space. Look at that levitating like can right there. If you look in here, a collapsible shower stall so they could actually like close it if they need to take a shower or open it and just kind of expands. And that's actually inside the Skylab or the Space Lab um, that's orbiting Earth. Um, I know technology may have improved um, but something similar would be sort of like that. They also managed to collect some soil, some lunar soil from here on the Apollo 17 mission. Uh, this right here is lunar breccias, fragmental rocks, um, which is pretty cool here. The north of site. an important rock type of the lunar highlands that probably formed a primitive lunar crust. And this right here is the uh, command module from Skylab 4. Take a look at that. And you can actually see that's where the person would sit, right in that seat right there. This is cool. This is all the stuff that they would have brought along with them. Uh, I think this is all from the Apollo 11 mission. Um, as you can see, there's sun sunglasses and a pouch here, uh, scissors, uh, personal preference kit, there's an American flag in there, 
Um, there is like razors and a toothbrush, oral hygiene bag. This is the fecal bag. Well, you know what they need to do with that bag. It's for your number twos. And then a urine transfer tube. Take a look at the command console, the main display console. Like this thing is huge. Like this is literally nothing like the <laughs> mission. There's nothing like the uh, mission space ride at Disney World. I'll tell you that much. And the cool thing is, like, definitely a NASA. We haven't gone there yet, but we definitely should. But you can actually see like a model of the spaceship just right here, which is really cool. Uh, but this would be the Saturn V right here, and the launch tower of the Saturn V. Speaking of the Saturn V. This right here is one of the rocket engines. Look how massive that is. Like, I'm gonna go around to the back end, but if you take a look, like this is just a small part, but even at its smallest, it's, it's biggest. Wow. This museum doesn't always just cover just planes and stuff like that. It also covers like nautical travel as well. Um, like there's a marine uh, chronometer here. So you It's like Harry Potter. Take a look right here. I believe this is not really quite sure what this is, but this is a little bit part of. Uh, and right here is the Hubble Space Telescope. Right here. Uh, you heard a lot about it, like growing up, but. I think seeing something like this, like, in person is crazy. Correction, I do want to say this is the Apollo uh, Soyuz test project. So that's kind of what this is. So if I didn't say it before, there it is. I read the sign. So here's a piece of an actual, like, telescope from the Mount Wilson uh, uh, Observatory. Like a very small piece, but somebody would be sitting right where that mannequin is. And they'll be able to see the stars as you can see like there's like the little viewpoint there's like the I want to say it's like a mirror or something and shoot right up I have a nice little exhibit here and talks about like dark matter and then you can actually look through here and then there's a universe with dark matter a galaxy cluster if you can kind of take a look at how that looks but without it so much clearer that looks like but it looks like a little bit more too Clear eyes got you down. The Hubble Space Telescope backup mirror is right here too. Like I don't know if that's all mirror or at least like a portion, but it's pretty cool. One of the exhibits will allow you to go inside uh, a portion of the space shuttle. Like right here, it's like looking out into space here. Oh, this is cool. You can actually like open up certain compartments, ask you like questions. Like, what's the mid deck look like on a mission? Open it up. That's what the mid deck is. Which movie star is on board? Hey, it's Buzz Lightyear. By the way, I've been looking for this plane all day, but I had yet to find it. That right there is the Spirit of St. Louis, and that is the plane, the world famous plane. I think Charles Lindbergh flew that plane from, uh, that was like the first international flight. That, that's history. All right, and that was the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. There's a lot more stuff that we probably didn't even cover. And if we covered it all, this would be a three hour vlog. <laughs> all right, what'd you think, baby? I loved it. Um, I wasn't really interested in like the flight stuff. But I know like flight was like the stepping stones to getting to space. I'm just interested in space, but I thought it was amazing. All of it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was, it was a lot. I know, of like she loves the space stuff and she's definitely like my space expert, so. Yes, when I can get him to talk to me about it. I tried, I tried. But I like, I love their space stuff. Their space stuff was amazing. I like a lot of the stuff that they have with the planets. For me, like a lot of stuff of, of uh, space travel, that's really cool. So, well that's it. We're done. We're sick of it. We are sick of it. We got more to come. I'm out. Make, 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 make,